we back. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't you no know chance what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. So YouTube team you know keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any question you want to about the NFL and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. We, I was just talking to my guy Jermaine about it this morning. We have almost officially made it through the slowest part of the off season. Like, and honestly, it went by fast, man. It went by fast, for me, at least, because uh, stuff has still been crazy busy, but we're, like, right there. Training camp starts, what, next week, I think? Like, so we're, like, right there. Still looking for a pass for July 30th, but we'll see how things go with that. But anyway, I love y'all. We got some really good questions, as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Nick Brick. He said, I hate to ask a Lamar question since we've all been hearing so much about him lately, but I was shamefully reading some Twitter nonsense and saw a tweet that said he has declined drastically since his MVP season. And I think we all know who that tweet came from. She got very popular off of that tweet. But anyway, it's not important. Uh, besides the fact that it's only been one COVID season since then. I also thought last season he was better. Obviously, 2019 was magical, but everything went right, and he gained my trust throughout the season. In 2020, our offense was horrible. Mostly new offensive line, worst receiving corps in the league, and I love Gus, but on paper, our running backs on a running team were an undrafted free agent and a rookie, and not to mention we got wrecked by COVID. I mean, on paper, excluding quarterback, our offensive roster was worse than the Eagles, the Lions, the Bears, Vikings, the list goes on. Yet, every time he dropped back, I was never worried, no matter the situation. I can't say the same about early 2019 Lamar, and if we had 2019 Lamar with all the turmoil in 2020, I don't think we make the playoffs. Obviously, uh, the stats don't say this, and anyone who doesn't watch the Ravens wouldn't understand this. Ooh. That's a very good, that, that was the only part you had to say. Anyone that doesn't watch, they won't understand. If you look at the numbers, if you're just looking on paper, then you'd be like, oh man, what happened? What's going on? But if you actually watch, you can see, oh, okay, I get it now. Anyway, um, but all of Team Keep It Clean that sits on these live streams every Sunday can clearly see, oh, appreciate that little shout out too, I like that. And that, that was like a little, uh, a little shameless plug for the live streams that we do during the games. But I, I, I like that. But anyway, he said, uh, all of Team Keep It Clean that sits on these live streams every Sunday can clearly see that we are watching a guy that gets better every single game. I'm not making excuses for him because I genuinely believe we were watching a better quarterback work with less. The way he got through the progression, much more patient in the pocket. Accuracy on tight window throws was steps ahead of 2019. Only thing he struggled with was deep throws. Man, out. While I was reading that part, I was thinking I, I, he, he wasn't good on a deep ball last year. That was definitely a problem, but then you went and said it. Uh, and it was obvious that he was just overthinking them. I've ranted a long time, but my question is, aside from the stats and all that, just watching the games each week, do you believe that Lamar Jackson grew as a quarterback in 2020? Or do you believe he declined? That is a very, very good question. And what a powerful way to start off question from subscribers with my guy, Nick brick um but anyway with lamar jackson yes that is something that a lot of pundits and analysts and experts and all this and all that say lamar jackson he regressed lamar jackson he declined lamar jackson he took a step back uh in 2020 from 2019 but me the way i look at it the way i see it and, and like you said you got to watch the games to really understand with lamar jackson were his numbers as pretty as they were uh in 2019 no no, but again, he was coming off. Uh, we, the only place you have to go from an MVP season is down. That's it. That's it. You, you, you cannot go up from an MVP. Well, you can technically, but 9.9 .9 times out of 10 after MVP season, you're going to go down. Your stats are going to go down. It's like the only, the only place to go from the top is down. So that's what happened to Lamar Jackson statistically. But then... Again, that's when you just look at it on paper. But when you look at what's around him, biggest thing that declined uh, way more than Lamar Jackson was the offensive line. It was the offensive line. And we lost Marshall Yonder. Uh, we lost Ronnie Stanley. Um, it was just Matt Scorer. He wasn't all the way back yet. 
Um, there was Pat McCarty. There was uh, Tyree Phillips, who was up and down. There was um, Bradley Bow. It, it was just the offensive line was constantly in shambles, man. Constantly in shambles. So the offense was constantly in shambles and something else that you talked about too it was the COVID season it was a COVID season so with it being that season the Ravens they didn't have an off season so that really took away from everything that took away from everything that took away from them possibly implementing new things uh, in the passing game and I, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why Greg Roman may have gotten a, a slight pass even though, again, they brought in T. Martin and Keith Williams, they're like, hey, Greg, it's time for everybody to step it up this year. No excuses. No excuses. Um, but with, with the offense as a whole, just with Lamar Jackson, as far as when people say he regressed, no. And, and, and that is another thing that you pointed out, too, with his patience in the pocket. It seemed as if um, they had a, a lot of on-the-job training early on in the regular season because they didn't have a preseason because they didn't have an off season uh because you know that Lamar Jackson early on in the season they were just having him throw 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 and a lot of us were like hey what's going on with the running game but well, I mean I appreciate the pass game too but what's going on with the running game what's up they had him throw 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 extra heavy and it seems as if they were trying to sort of play some makeup uh for everything that they missed uh in the off season um, but with that being said, uh, I, I, I don't think he regressed. Uh, like you said, he did, again, staying in the pocket, waiting, being patient. And, and the thing with Lamar, sometimes it almost felt like he was being too patient. And again, if you, don't, if you didn't watch the games, you wouldn't be able to see that. Because you look on the stat sheet, oh, this was, this was his numbers for this game. These were his numbers for that game. But if you actually watch the games, you see this guy. Because a lot of people like to run with one of, the, one of the many narratives of Lamar Jackson that isn't true. Where they say, oh, that guy, he's no pocket quarterback. He can't be a pocket quarterback. He, can't, he doesn't stay in the pocket. Lamar Jackson is a run-first quarterback. Whenever people say that, whenever they say that, I, just, I, I, I cringe twice. I cringe twice. I go, ugh, ugh, because it's just, that's how you can always tell that people do not watch Lamar Jackson and they just listen to people on TV. They just listen to these experts and whatnot because that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Yes, Lamar Jackson, the past two years, 1,000 yards rushing. Over 1,000 yards rushing at the quarterback position. Oof. Keep changing the game, Lamar. But he is not a run first quarterback. He's not. Lamar Jackson, y'all know it. Well, those of y'all that watch, Lamar Jackson will sit there and wait, and he'll wait, and he'll wait, and he'll wait, and he'll wait. And, and, and a lot of times it can be frustrating because we know what he is capable of on the ground, too. So a lot of times when he's waiting and waiting and, and nothing's coming open. We're thinking in our heads and saying it out loud to the TV, Lamar, go. Lamar, run. Take off, please. Let's go, man. Come on. But he'd be just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And sometimes, finally, somebody comes open. Sometimes he takes off. Sometimes he'll take a sack. Or sometimes he'll throw it away. It all just depends. But he is not a run-first quarterback, and he has made plenty Plenty, 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 plenty of passes from the pocket. So that narrative, when people try to run with that, it's like, why? What, what are you doing that for? Why are you even saying that? It's not true. That's not factual. And then there's the other narrative, too, that Lamar has continued to shut down. But people, they don't, they don't like believing facts, though. And shout out to my guy, Simply AS10. He just made a video about all of Lamar, I don't know if it was every single pass, but he made a video of Lamar Jackson throwing outside the numbers. Passes from his rookie year, sophomore year, third year, passes that he was throwing outside the numbers. Because what a lot of people like to do, they, they say, oh, Lamar Jackson can't pass outside the numbers. So they'll pull up some incompletions. They may pull up some interceptions. They may pull up some bad throws from Lamar Jackson. They be like, see, he can't pass outside the numbers. But then you have Simply who says, wait a minute. No, <laughs> he can. 
He has and he will pass outside the numbers. He can do that. With Lamar Jackson, um, a lot of people, they, uh, they try to emphasize things that he can't do uh, that he has already proven to do. Um, but again, it's, that's, that's never going to go away. It's, it's never going to go away. With Lamar Jackson, uh, the, the, the pedestal, the, um, his, what, what people feel like Lamar Jackson needs to accomplish to be respected as a quarterback, his, ex his expectation levels are through the roof. They are through the roof. And you look at some other quarterbacks, guys that have been around longer than Lamar Jackson, and people say, oh, yeah, that guy's pretty good. He got a lot of respect, but he hasn't even accomplished half of what Lamar Jackson has. One of those guys uh, is definitely Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford has a lot of respect from people around the league. Oh, yeah, Matthew Stafford went to the Rams. Oh, man, those guys, they, they got them one. They sure got them a quarterback. What has Matthew Stafford done? Did they have some 5,000-yard passing seasons? Is that it? Is that it? This guy, he, for years, he had the best, one of the best wide receivers to ever do it. Ever. Period. What does Matthew Stafford accomplish? How many playoff wins does Matthew Stafford have? Huh? Dak Prescott! He's another one! And again, this is not me. I'm not hating on any of these quarterbacks. But I'm, my, my thing is, what have they done where they have just all this respect? And all, these, uh, all this praise? To where when people talk about them, they're like, oh, yeah, those guys did it. But when they talk about Lamar Jackson, it's like, mm, mm, no, he, he needs to do this in order to be respected. No, he needs to do this. He needs to do that. He need, oh, no. It, it happens so much. But it is what it is. Um, so to answer your question again, no, I don't, I don't feel like Lamar Jackson has regressed. I don't feel like Lamar Jackson has declined. I don't feel like Lamar Jackson has taken a step back uh, as a quarterback. Uh, but I do feel like with Lamar Jackson, what took the biggest step back for the Ravens as a whole, what took the biggest step back for their offense as a whole, was the offensive line. Uh, so this is why they invested into the offensive line. Uh, and they also invested into some weapons uh, for Lamar Jackson because both of those go hand in hand. With the offensive line, if you're not getting any blocking, you could have the best weapons out there. And sometimes those weapons can actually help the offensive line because the quicker a wide receiver gets open, the less time that offensive line has to block for. So it goes hand in hand. Or the longer it may be taking a receiver to get open, if you got a good offensive line, they'll give you some time for that receiver to do just that. So Ravens, they, they definitely um, did a little double dipping in, in both of those categories. Of course, Alejandro Villanueva, uh, Kevin Zeitler for the offensive line. Bradley Bozeman, shifting him back to center. Uh, we should get a healthy Ronnie Stanley back, whether he starts the season healthy or he starts the season on PUP and he has to mix, miss six games. Hopefully that's not what the case is. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But whatever the case may be, the offensive line should be a lot better this year than it was last year. And especially another thing to think about too, training camp. The offset, they'll actually have that this year. They didn't have that last year. But with them having it this year, things should be a lot better. Um, and as far as the wide receivers, too, Sammy Watkins, veteran. And he, he can play. Biggest question mark with him is health. That, that is the biggest thing. I don't think anybody questions Sammy Watkins' head. I mean, his hands, his, his, his head, his mind space, his heart. They don't question any of that stuff. Um, but the only thing that, that's, that's questionable about him is his health. Can he stay healthy? And now instead of 16, it's 17 games. But they know he can ball out. Rashad Bateman, he obviously got to prove it on an NFL level, but excellent route runner, excellent hands, and underrated speed. Underrated speed. So they added him. They also added Tylen Wallace. Not the tallest of the tall, but a go up and get it, 50-50 guy. Some deceptive speed, uh, but some deceptive strength as well. Added him as well. Then, of course, Hollywood. You got Hollywood coming back again. Um, underrated route runner. Underrated route runner. Very underrated. 
So you got him in another year. And one of the biggest additions, too, besides the personnel, is the coaches with Keith Williams and T. Martin. So you add those guys and what they've been able to do with different receivers around the league. Uh, you add those guys and what they've been able to do, what's on their resume. You add that to the Ravens wide receiver, just the, the Ravens, period. You add that to their offense, period. Because they also did say that they're going to be getting involved with the route running as far as with the running backs, too. And then, of course, that would have to be with the tight ends as well. It's going to be with everybody. So it just, it just adds so much value to the team, man. So they should be in much, they are in much better shape heading into this season uh, than they were last season. And I'm sure Lamar will be able to show everybody that he did not regress. He did not decline. He did not take a step back. And he'll be just fine. We out. And you know just what I mean. You too, T, keep it clean. You see my boy, he